Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to start Chapter 4. Where we're going to learn about the very important technique of linearization about specific solutions of ODEs. So in the last chapter, Chapter 3, we learned about behavior near trajectories, but the main point of that chapter was to define notions of stability of both trajectories and invariant sets. In this chapter, we're going to talk about linearization about specific solutions of ODEs. So what does that mean? Well, let's start off in the same way we did in the last chapter. We'll consider a general, non-autonomous ODE and a specific solution, x bar, which is a function of t, t naught, and x naught. We're going to leave out the arguments when it gets too cumbersome. Uh, we'll always have x bar, but uh, it will be, well, for example, right here. So we're going to define a coordinate system that localizes x bar in the sense that our original coordinates, x, are going to be y plus x bar. This is exactly the same thing we did in the last chapter. You can think of it as a moving coordinate system because x bar varies in time. So y equals 0 corresponds to x equal x bar. So as y small, that defines a, a coordinate that's close to x bar. So we want to define a ordinary differential equation in y, just like we did last time. So we differentiate this expression. So x dot is y dot plus x bar dot. And we plug that into the ODE. Now, we want to isolate y by itself. So we put y dot on the left-hand side. And we have f of y plus x bar, comma t minus x bar dot. But x bar dot is f of x bar t. x bar is a solution of the equations. And this is exactly what we did last time. We see that y equals 0 is an equilibrium point of this equation. And formulating the definitions of stability was much more convenient for us to talk about the stability of the y equals 0 solution. But we're going to do something a little bit different. Now we're going to tailor expand this expression right here in y about x bar. And what about t? We just leave t fixed and pretend it's a constant in the Taylor expansion. Okay. Now, Taylor expansions are things you've done before, but at this stage in your education, you may be a bit rusty about Taylor expansion for functions of more than one variable or vector-valued functions of more than one variable. That's why I have Appendix A for you to revise those notions. But the general idea is just the same as that we're used to f of y plus x bar t, it's the zeroth order expression plus the linear expression. Now df of x bar comma t is an n by n matrix. It's the Jacobian matrix. It's the matrix of partial derivatives. t is just held constant. This is a very slick notation. Otherwise, there would be a lot of indices and matrices. We'll get to that when we do specific examples. But right now, we just want to show the formalism and the form of the equations. And then we have terms that are higher order in the terms that are linear in y. We could compute them if we wanted to, but we're not, we don't want to at the moment. So we take this Taylor expanded expression we plug it into the equation we've already derived for f of y plus x bar t. So that is 
zeroth order term in the Taylor expansion plus the linear term plus the nonlinear terms that we didn't compute. That's what this big O of modulus of y squared means, terms of order 2 and higher, minus f of x bar t. Well, look, these two terms cancel, and we're just left with this. So we have an equation for y dot. y is the deviation from the solution of interest, x bar. And we have a linear expression, n by n Jacobian matrix multiplied by y vector multiplication, and the nonlinear terms. Now, we're interested in the behavior near x bar. So that, that means the behavior of this equation for y small. It seems reasonable that if we're interested in the behavior for y small, that this equation, the linear equation, will be a good approximation to the behavior. And so that's the motivation for studying linear equations, linearizations. So we refer to 4.6 as the linearization of the vector field, that's the right-hand side, about this solution. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it tells you exactly what you're doing. You're linearizing about um, the solution x bar. What does that mean? It means you, you convert the original equation to a linear equation. Now, does that linear equation faithfully represent the true dynamics near x bar of t and t naught, x naught? Well, that has to be proven. But first, we're going to, and we will deal with that question later on as we go throughout the course, but first, we want to study linear equations in their own right, and this is the motivation. Okay, this Jacobian, df, here's all the information, evaluated on a specific solution, x bar, t, t naught, x naught, comma, t, is a, is a big thing to write down and carry, write down and carry around in the notation. We're just going to call that a of t at the moment. So the linear equation looks like this. It's a non-autonomous linear equation. Can we solve it? Sadly, no. In general, for an n by n system, n by n matrix with n bigger than 1, for n equal 1, we can solve it and go to Appendix B. And you'll see some examples of that. But in general, even for 2 by 2 matrices, we can't analytically solve this equation. So we're not much better off than we were in the original, for the original um, x dot equals f of x comma t, maybe. But there is a special situation where we can get a lot of information. It's a very important situation, and so we're going to spend a lot of time studying it. So. We're, this, this is the case of linearizing about an autonomous vector field where the solution of interest is an equilibrium point. So x dot equals f of x is autonomous, and x equal x naught is an equilibrium point. So f of x naught is 0. All right. So in this case, this is our equation. And the thing to keep in mind, the important point here, is this Jacobian matrix, df of x0, is an n by n matrix of real numbers. It's a constant matrix. And so going along with the same simplified notation, we write this in this way, where A is our notation for the Jacobian. It's a constant n by n matrix, and we can solve this equation analytically. And in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about what it means to solve it analytically and how we go about that. So that's all for now. See you next time.